Um, and I'm actually, uh, I've asked my friend Andres Ospina uh, to come and tell his story. So Andres, do you want to tell us a little bit about you and then I want to ask you about your story because you have an amazing one. Awesome. Uh, thank you. Thank you for having me. Uh, yeah, just, uh, you know, as we've spoken, we've spoken so much. Uh, I just, for me, my background, uh, I came from, uh, I'm first generation uh, from Colombia. Uh, so first generation from Colombia, uh, only one out of all my siblings that was born in this country. And uh, when I came here, you know, I mean, my parents, it was always home-cooked meals, which is, you know, really healthy to eat home-cooked. Uh, that's, you know, that's one of the best pieces of advice you can ever give people is, is eat home-cooked meals, which I did. You know, I was forced to. I couldn't get up out of the dinner table. But uh, what was different um, from what my parents experienced growing up was that there were fast food places, you know. Uh, there was fast food. There was McDonald's, you know, kids you know, my generation was being just bombarded with propaganda from a very well-known terrorist named Ronald McDonald. <laughs> <laughs> you know? um, and, and my parents didn't know any better. My parents didn't have the education that I got. Uh, you know, my, my nutrition education, I didn't even get it from school. So, you know, less are they going to. Um, and I grew up in a neighborhood that was right, that there was a McDonald's right on the corner. So, and then when the infamous hat, uh, $1 the dollar menu came out, you know, as a kid growing up, you're playing street football or hide and seek, you know, manhunt or butts up uh, with your friends, you know, you get tired, you, you expend a lot of energy and, you know, your parents will give you a couple bucks for you to snack at McDonald's, you know, before dinner. Uh, or, you know, the frozen, the frozen pizza, the pizza bits, the pizza pockets, those little ones, like your bag with like 15 of them. I loved those, loved them, absolutely loved them. Um, Oreo cookies, you know. Yeah. Um, Just so people know, um, Andres and I grew up in the same town, actually. Yeah. Uh, Greenwich, Connecticut. So I know exactly the McDonald's he's talking about. And the yeah. same middle school we went to had the same crappy sausages and the same, like, crappy ice cream sandwiches, which you thought was normal to have, like, for lunch because that's all they normal. had in our schools. Yeah, the pizzas and the tacos and... Uh. <laughs> yeah. And, um... So, so when you, you know, when I really look back for, for my entire life, especially that period when I lived in that neighborhood, I was going to McDonald's almost every day for a period of 10 years. So have you ever seen, so when I saw Super Size Me, that's like what really blew my mind because this guy ate McDonald's three times a day for 30 days. So that's 90 McDonald's meals. I definitely outbeat him by a good thousand, <laughs> you know? Uh, yeah, but you weren't obese, right? I mean, was that was Super Size Me the changing point for you? Like, uh, what was you had was some realization? Obese. Well, I, I mean, due to the fact that I was so active, and that I was so active, and I played so much, and I rode my bike so much, I was overweight. I was uh, I was pudgy, uh, but it never. But due to you know a child's metabolism, you know, I, I was able. I I was pudgy, but so not like obese due to my active lifestyle, but what I did have issues with was being pudgy, low bone density, mm -hmm. uh, because the acidosis that I was causing to my body, a uh, very poor immune system, where getting a cold every 60 days just kind of became the norm, and I was just kind of told that that's just me, having low stamina and asthma and uh, having a hard time waking up in the morning was just me, it was just my genetics, it was just part of of who I am, and there's nothing that I could really do, uh, and and that's just and for me in high school it led to like a lot of insecurity, uh, as we spoke about earlier, just a lot of insecurity. I wasn't as strong as the other kids. I wasn't as fast as the other kids. I couldn't run a mile as fast as the other kids, um, because over time I damaged my immune system so much, and you know I just put so much acidic food in my body that by high school. Um, I had pneumonia three times, uh, and by the third time that I got pneumonia, my junior year in high school, I ended up, because it was my third time having pneumonia, antibiotics were not working as effectively, you know, right. let alone I don't even like antibiotics now, <laughs> uh, 
But um, the they probably weren't Indiana, educated about it too, though. At the oh, time, I, I was just like, take nothing. this. I didn't get yeah. my education about this till I was twenty, until after I dropped out of college, you know. And um, and I got into sales and marketing for for a supplement company. That was really what opened up the doors for me. Um, mm. But that third time that I got pneumonia, I, I lost thirty five pounds in, in three weeks. And I, you know, what scared me was the fact that when it's that dangerous, pneumonia can be very deadly. You know, so so I had all these really health issues, pre-diabetic by that time, just really shut down my, you know, I was going to the bathroom, number two, sorry if this grosses anybody watching this, but it's important that you know that I was going once every other day, and that's bad. That's so that bad. bad. That's and no, so no hard. worries with TMI, we're here to be real. You yeah, know? we're here to be super real, and, in, and if, you're, if you're putting three garbage bags in your house, if you're filling up three garbage bags a day in your house, but you're only getting rid of one, you know, putting one in the disposal, then do eventually the you're gonna you yeah. do the math and you're gonna pile up so much garbage in your house that all the other rooms are gonna stink. And I use that analogy because it's this is where it starts. You, this is where you have in your stomach and your digestive tract and that lower chakra is if you're storing all this crap, all this gunk, you're just gonna if you under if you know. For any viewers that understand the chakras, when you hurt one chakra, you're going to imbalance the rest. You're going to imbalance the, the rest of your body. So by having all this junk that I wasn't getting out and having all this buildup and all this literally crap that I wasn't getting rid of, all of a sudden my body had no choice but to force it into my bloodstream and to almost redigest it. And basically um, I was 20 years old. I uh, I was I had just quit this amazing corporate job that I that I got promoted in because I realized that I was putting myself in a trap uh, in corporate America where I was going to end up the next 40 years of my life ending up like all everybody else around me. Um, so so maybe because I didn't have to fight for a college education, I was I was less fearful of just saying screw this. Uh, but I ended up but I was making really good money. I had my own apartment in Stanford. And, uh, and was living on my own and when I quit this job like on a limb, a young immature kid that didn't think about having that something set up if I'm going to quit my job, uh, you know, I ended up uh, just being broke and, and not being able to pay rent and not being able to feed myself. I literally, my, my, in the same night my phone shut off, I had no gas in the car to make it down to Greenwich to, to get food at my parents' house and I had no money in my pocket and I literally went to sleep hungry one night. And then I got introduced to a company called Your Health, which is a supplement network marketing company. And I got started with them. Personally, uh, I'm not in network marketing anymore. Uh, personally, I love the industry. I love what it taught me. I love what it teaches people. Um, uh, I, I do believe in, in supplementation for people that can't get around to being uh, organic, you know, vegans. Uh, all the time, or I feel they have they have a busy lifestyle, especially for for depending on the type of workout regimen you have. I think that uh, it can be good, um, but uh, but what it really was for me was a really big educational platform. I was around health conscious people that cared about their health, want to know more. Uh, a lot of the doctors that formulated the products um, were very uh, were very helpful, and I got introduced to a doctor called Dickie Fuller. Dr. Dickie Fuller is the top en digestive enzyme researcher, scientist in the world. Uh, she, she, she's a cancer survivor thanks to her, uh, can thanks to her digestive enzyme regimen. And what I first really learned was about digestive enzymes. And that really struck a chord with me because that helped. Because the second I started taking digestive enzymes and probiotics, I started going in the bathroom a way I had never gone in my entire life. You know, and if you guys look it up, look it up on Google, it's called the the poopy police or the poo-poo police, <laughs> you know? <laughs> uh, but it's literally a diagram of what your stool should look like. And it's crucial because you have to know what a healthy stool looks like. Because if you're not eliminating two of those a day at least, you're, you have a huge problem, and you're toxic. You're literally leaving poison in your body. Yeah, so. I think a lot of people think that's normal, but I know that for myself as well. Like I'm so regular. When I first get up, it's like 
it's, yeah. it's, it's incredible to change your life and, and see that. But I, I did want to clarify, what was the turning point for you? So you got pneumonia at like 18, you're young, you're not, your digestive tract is not what you want it to be. So what was the turning point for you? When did you hit your bottom and start to change and what helped you to change? The, the turning point, because because I had so many health issues as a kid and I told it was genetics, that's what I believed. So it wasn't really until I got introduced to Dickie Fuller and, and digestive enzymes that I really realized, and Dickie Fuller, you know, she was, she's, she's very verbal. I mean, she, she's gotten in some trouble with the company I worked in just because she'll go on stage and say digestive enzymes cure cancer. <laughs> you know, uh, and you know it, it, it's risky to say that stuff right now. You know, it's risky to say that a holistic lifestyle will cure cancer. You know, um, I believe it. <laughs> you know, that's right. just my personal opinion, right? Opinion. Um, it's not your. It's not your genetics. <laughs> yeah, what are you talking yeah. about? <laughs> yeah. You know, um, and to say that all the medical do medical doctors were wrong. You know, so so she's very outspoken about that. And when I started really hearing these. When you start hearing about how nutrition, when in a in a balanced body, what she told me is that in a balanced body, disease and illness cannot exist. Exactly. So yeah. Once that was my turning point. In a balanced body, disease and illness cannot exist. And then within the same company, going to the seminars weekly, uh, you know, one of the seminars they put up Food Matters and Food Inc. You know, as the entire the entire training was that. Um, so that was a huge turning point for me, uh, and and really just being involved involved in a in a healthy company, a uh, health conscious company, really really was a big turning point for me, and and I became a big advocate of digestive enzymes, and uh, helping other people helping other people understand the importance of it because digestive enzymes are limited in our bodies, um, especially if, you know you're you're a raw vegan, so you don't have that issue at all because you're getting all your enzymes from your raw food. So you have all the and all the digestive enzymes you need in all the raw food that you eat. But um, but when you cook your food, you destroy a lot of those digestive enzymes. So sure. as a kid, especially when you're eating junk food, you're depleting your enzyme bank and that's why you have this common stigma that says that at the age of 25, between the ages of 25 and 30, your metabolism starts to shut down and slow down. That's bullshit. It's not that it starts to shut down and slow down. It's just the fact that you're depleted all your digestive enzymes from all the years of eating all this food that now your body has to take its own digestive enzymes and actually digest your food for you when your food is actually supposed to just digest itself. Right, because the carrot, the banana, the orange, if, if I cut this apple in half and I leave it sitting here, in a few minutes it's going to start going brown. It's going to start already decomposing for me. You know, it's going to do that for me. My body doesn't need to put in an extra load and effort to, to start digesting. All that stress that I was putting on my digestive system for all these years was, was really what caused it. So. Yeah. Just uh, getting on, a, on, on that right track and getting educated and, and really learning about these radical concepts that people want to call radical nowadays, mm -hmm. uh, which really have been around for thousands of years, <laughs> you know. Um, yeah, and like know, chemo hasn't improved. The efficacy of chemo is like something dismal and it hasn't improved since like the 1940s. Yeah, we think that's normal. People oh, think a raw food diet is extreme. When I think opening up, ripping open your chest, to pull out the cholesterol from your heart veins, I think yeah. that's pretty extreme versus being a raw vegan or eating a whole food, you know, diet, which is also, from what I understand, what you base your life off of now. It's just like, and Food Inc. that you had mentioned, that's a great documentary for people to saturate themselves with, or forks over knives, or yeah. just, you know, uh, it's um, just the information. I just, I love how more people and more people are knowing about it. And, so, yeah, it's exactly. definitely intense what you went through. So, but. so going through that, and then just realizing that a lot of it was due to my my parents' ignorance, you know, and it wasn't their fault. They were they were immigrants, and and they were fed the same propaganda I was fed. Um, but then when I really, but then, 
going out there and, and being part of this company and, and making it a mission and a career to help people get healthy, that's what really opened, started opening up my eyes to the true ignorance out there because I would sit in front of people that were literally 450 pounds, Anna, and as they're drinking their Fanta orange soda and, and bag of chips, they look at me and they tell me that they're not going to start my program because the doctor said that there's nothing they can do and that wow. they're just going to be that where they're going to be morbidly obese for the rest of their life as they're drinking the soda and the chips right. right you know and it's like oh no absolutely you know absolutely you can reverse this 100% like do you know the beautiful creation that is your body you know yeah. um and and just seeing how these people how so many people have this belief that there's nothing they can do about it mm. you know, that, that they're that they're helpless that really inspired me and then I'm inspired every time I see a parent walk into a, walk in, with a child into a Burger King or a fast food restaurant. That inspires me because clearly they don't know that they're literally giving their kids ingredients that are found in rat poison. Yeah, exactly. Did you, you know, know that a Twinkie like literally doesn't decompose ever? So oh, it just puts it in perspective when you said about the digestive enzymes like an apple or a banana or you know whatever is going to rot over time but a Twinkie will literally sit there and like not decompose forever yeah. <laughs> like that's I mean, this, incredible this banana will the this apple will go brown in the next 30 minutes you know but that McDonald's cheeseburger I mean do the experiment so many of, I mean the experiments pretty popular now just buy a, a cheeseburger at the dollar menu and then just put it in your closet and for a year by the time it just, it'll look like a, it'll look like the same cheeseburger, except it's just hard, you know. Yeah, the the yeah. cheeseburger, nothing happens to the cheeseburger, nothing happens to the fries, you know. And mm -hmm. and what inspires me the fact that these parents don't know, they don't know, they have their, they don't know what they're putting in their body, right? They, I just found out less than a year ago that natural flavoring, natural raspberry flavoring, is is from a beaver sack. You know, beaver anus sac, like a, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and that's not radical? Like, that's amazing to me. Like, an apple is radical. Banana for lunch is, like, or 10 bananas for lunch is radical. Yeah. But natural raspberry flavoring. And, and the only like reason some, it's viral yeah. is because it's, it's beaver anus, you know? So it's funny. Yeah. But that, that's nothing, you know? It's like, you know how many products we use that people are using that have you know, whale semen and horse urine and cow dung, you know, just all these, you know. That's well, we don't have to go there, but I definitely hear what you're saying. You know what but I what mean? I'm also, what I'm also hearing from your, um, and that's a reality. What you just said is, like, actually out there, so, like, do a little bit of research, and it's not hard to find. If there's more than five ingredients, and some of them you can't pronounce, even, like natural raspberry flavoring you can pronounce, but it's still some pretty, like, I don't know, insidious stuff. But what it's I am hearing from your corrupt. story <laughs> is that you helped your community. You saturated yourself in a community that was interested in health. So yeah. one of the keys for success for you was to actually surround yourself with people whose mission it was, you know, was to create more health or to create more awareness around health, to have people realize that they had a choice. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And and uh, especially me, you know, being around the, that community, being around health conscious people is important for several reasons. One, we were able to help people together, you know. We were able to help people together. We were able to bring people into that community that were 90 pounds overweight, help them lose those 90 pounds, and then bring them into our community so they could help others, you know. Um, and, and then at the same time, I'm very stubborn, <laughs> you know. Like I said, like I have a lot of vegan friends. I personally still eat meat, you know. and So I'm very stubborn because they'll, you know, what is your diet like now? Because we were talking a little bit about it, and it sounds actually pretty similar. So what is your diet like now? Yeah. I, every morning, I wake up, and the first thing that me and my girlfriend do is that we juice. Uh, we juice every first thing in the morning, and we play around with it. We have a lot of fun trying out different things, uh, you know, with broccoli, spinach, Brussels sprouts, apples, mangoes, pineapples, you know, just juicing whatever we can get our hands on, just see what it tastes like. You know, we, we 
one time we spent like 30 minutes pitting a whole bucket of cherries just to make cherry juice. <laughs> you know? That's awesome. Yeah, and the mangoes in Florida have got to be incredible oh, from out yeah. of here. And, and cherry juice, I mean, you know, who has cherry juice, you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, fresh cherry juice, yeah. yeah Sounds like time commitment. I've never, yeah, exactly. It was delicious. It was outstanding. Um, so, so that's the first thing we do in the morning. And then uh, usually I, I pretty much I do my best to stick to whole grains. Uh, we get our, our meat, make sure that it's uh, that it's organic meat. Because um, I'm not I'm definitely not if I'm gonna eat meat then I'm definitely not gonna uh, I'm not gonna sacrifice and, and eat garbage meat, you know. Uh, and and for the most part, you know, I, I like I'm a grazer. So I, I really like to graze. I think that's the way I keep my metabolism active. Uh, so throughout the day, you know, I, I love a, you ever heard of uh, so I'll graze on seeds you know, a lot of seeds, uh, you know, I'm about to bake this puppy in a bit, sweet potato. Those uh, carbs are dangerous, man, watch the fuck out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yams though, yams are, are, are the safest, so sweet potato versus having a regular potato will probably be a lot better, uh, yeah, you know. Yeah, yams so, are amazing, well, but you were saying earlier uh, when we were talking that like your diet is pretty much like just one uh, and, ingredient. Yeah, so it's, so I, I follow the paleo diet which is basically the whole rule behind the paleo diet is really, I learned about it from uh, CrossFit trainers and, and then the, you know, the new fitness trend called CrossFit. Um, do you roll your eyes? <laughs> <laughs> I, I just want to hear literally like what your diet is like. It sounds like it's okay. just one ingredient, man. <laughs> yeah, so I learned it from CrossFit. The CrossFit community is very popular by using the paleo diet and the paleo diet is one ingredient. So anything you eat that you can eat anything that is just one ingredient. Um, so instead of butter, you use ghee, for example, because uh, ghee is one ingredient. It's not going to be uh, compromised, right? Like people thinking margarine is good for you. Margarine is not good for you. Margarine is just a bunch of chemicals that have been made to taste like butter, <laughs> you know? Um, Right, so so that's what the whole basis is on because people are fooled to think that these uh, substitutes are good, you know. Right, when they're actually a chemical shitstorm. So technically, I guess I'm on a paleo diet, right? Being raw vegan. So exactly. Cool. Technically, you you would stay, you would put yourself in the paleo category, right? It's called they call it the caveman diet. So yeah, I mean, what cavemen? They didn't have you know these synthetic seasonings or MSG, you know, to add flavoring to their food. You know they, you know. Right, um, neurotoxins as well, and like addictive substances in our food, and you, like you said, you know everything that led to your digestion essentially shutting down your body, shutting down. So, what's your health like now? Do you want to show us your arm muscle? Or, I was quite impressed no, before. No, there's nothing to be impressed about. <laughs> ah, come on, Andres. <laughs> oh no, 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 come on! You're not gonna show it yet. Give me thirty days. Uh, uh, give me thirty days. But my health, my health is is. At the best, I'm not a you know I'm not a bodybuilder. I'm not someone that uh, I I personally now uh, of course I strive to have an, uh, a nice physique, you know, because who doesn't like to look good on the beach? Um, but I just want to make sure my belly's not hanging over my shorts, <laughs> you know, uh, and I want to make sure that I'm I'm slender and I want to make and I love sports, you know, like you, you uh, I love to ride my bike to the beach and I just want to make sure that when I ride when I get to the beach I'm not <gasps> like exhausted, you know, it's a three mile ride, it's nothing. <laughs> you know? Is that a difference that you're finding now, now that you've like cleaned up your digestion versus in high school, for example, or even partial uh, college experience? How have you noticed your fitness when you've cleaned up your diet? Like, do you notice the difference? Like, what are what are the health benefits that you've realized from I changing your life? Besides the the fitness pros, I'm probably the healthiest 25 year old I've met. <laughs> like, besides like you know people you know besides. You know, I would call you a fitness pro. You know, I mean, you, this is this is your career. You're you're a nutrition professional. You know, so besides other people that are already in the community, I would say that that it's kind of shocking when people come up to me and ask me, "How is it that I can run for so long? How is it that I can play a 90, 90 minute soccer game straight through? You know, without wanting to come off the field? You know, it's like I'm just I'm only twenty five. You know. Um, and I feel like I have a lot of years to make up for all the all the bad nutrition, you know. So so my fitness is a whole nother level, and it's it, it's it just it's beyond physical, 
You know, it goes down to a mental, emotional, spiritual level where it's a lot easier to meditate. It's a lot easier to sleep. It's a lot easier to get up in the morning. My dreams are vivid and beautiful, you know, and, and I feel energized from my food as opposed to stagnant from it, you know. You shouldn't feel your foods. You eat food for energy. Why? Why are you feeling tired from it? You know, why are you feeling down? So, so truly, it, it's. I can talk about it all day, you know, and obviously rant and get sidetracked because to me, it's. I think it's. I think what's going on right now is very corrupt, you know. Mm -hmm. And for me, I'm inspired. What keeps me driven? What keeps me doing this all the time is the fact that my mission is to take down these large corporations that are putting GMOs in all of our food. You know, it's like, I mean, right next to me, right here, I have a bunch of pamphlets, actually. It's so funny, you know? It's like the 10, 10, things, Monsanto, 10 things Monsanto does not want you to know, you know? Yeah. Uh, millions against Monsanto. Non-GMO shopping tips, you know, it's... Yeah, so if people want to find out more about like what you're saying, because GMO, a lot of people sort of don't really know what it is. So if people want to find you and find out more about what you're saying, because I think what you're saying has a lot of um, merit and a lot of, can change a lot of people's lives for the better. Where can people find you? Where can they find out more about this information? Um, so basically, the best way way to get in contact with me now is uh, is with our new mission. It's called Build Global Health. Uh, basically, Build Global Health is helping those that want to get into nutrition, that want to get into fitness, and they want to make a career out of it, helping you make a career out of it. Because my mission is to help as many people, just the way I was able to make a career out of it at a young age, the way you're able to make a career out of it now, and interact with so many people. Who doesn't want to do that? Who wouldn't want to? That's fulfillment. It's more than just about money. Now, money's great, and that's why... That's why a lot of times we have to be stuck in jobs we don't want to be in. Uh, but yeah, buildglobalhealth.com, facebook.com slash buildglobalhealth. And, uh, and basically the mission is helping more people that, that want to make a living out of it um, help, help you do that because it, it's easier than you think. You know? And I, I saw a lot of people throughout my career fail at it and give up on, on making a health a, a a profession because they feel they didn't have the right certifications or degrees or or they were too young or they were too old or they were too fat or they were too skinny you know all these excuses in your head that make you feel that you're not good enough to get the message out there you know and uh, and and basically for me after I you know I love the company that I was working with it taught me so much uh, but but really my true passion was going out there and helping people understand that, uh, that there are things that you can do. And obviously, as, as we've spoken about before, people need to, at the same time, about learning about nutrition and fitness and all these things that we just spoke about and, and, and what is good food, what is bad food, you have to learn how to communicate that. You have to learn how to sell it. You have to learn how to market it. You have to learn how to be enticing. You have to learn how to grab people's attention. Um, and you have to learn how to, you know, you said it perfectly earlier, how to be kind to them how to be compassionate to those that don't believe in what you have to say, that think it's all some pseudoscience, you know? Uh, people think it's, oh, pseudoscience, metaphysics, you know? It's not like that. It's very scientific. It's very, it's very logical, you know? It's yeah, just it's that. definitely logical when you can experiment on your own body and you see results, like, instantly. Like, I exactly. think that's pretty clear-cut. You know? And, and I want to help more people make a business out of it because a lot of these large corporations... Um, you know, they're putting hundreds of millions of dollars into lobbying to make sure that we stay ignorant. Uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, it sounds like it sounds like you're providing a lot of good things for people, and you're helping to make a good change in this world. And this is a great time to do it. So many people are waking up to it. So exactly, I'm sure a lot of more people are going to be getting on board with what you're doing. And I just I in consciousness. Yeah, definitely. You know, so so yeah, and uh, so buildglobalhealth.com. Uh, Facebook.com slash Build Global Health, YouTube.com slash Build Global Health. Uh, you know, you'll be able to find me doing a lot more interviews with amazing people like you. Uh, you know, you have an awesome intro to your page, by the way. And <laughs> thanks. <a> <laughs> thanks. Very, very yeah, cool. well, Thanks so much, Andres. It sounds like with your 
like whole food diet that you've been able to completely change your life and you know that you're doing great things with Build Global Health so yeah Thank thanks you. so much for your time and I wish only the best for you. Thank you so much and you know what next time we speak we will be a hundred percent vegan you know slowly edging towards that you know like a lot of my friends want me to go um, but, but like I said at the end of the day regardless it, it's you know it's just making sure we stay away from uh, that poison, <laughs> you know. Pretty much, yeah. So, yeah, um, keep your eyes on the prize, man. Absolutely. Let's do this. Let's change the world. Awesome. Okay. Thanks again. Thank you.